Hey guys, so I'm back. So, okay, I kind of went off on a tangent on that last video. So, I guess what I said there needed to be said. Um, Cause like I said, I literally like say a prayer before every video and just say, Lord, help me to say what you want me to say. Help me to not speak out of my flesh um, and things like that. So I guess that needed to be said cause like 20 minutes in and I didn't say anything I wanted to say. So anyways, um, so this video, I wanted to like kind of go over what the Lord has been showing me about milk and meat of the word of God and, um, and just what I'm seeing um, on YouTube, what I'm seeing um, in churches in the world and why we need to stand on, on the gospel firmly and we need to make sure that people understand the gospel and how they were saved um, because otherwise we can turn people into Pharisees and I will explain all that. So um, one, the Lord keeps showing me, like I had said in the last video, three kinds of people. Um, Pharisees who, who never believe the gospel that you're saved by grace through faith, um, not of works, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Um, and then he's showing me that there's people that believed the gospel, but then they get caught up in law because the Lord is sanctifying them. And the reason I say that is because I used to be that person like four years ago. Um, the Lord began to sanctify me and show me strongholds in my life where I needed to stop sinning. Um, and he, he showed me that through his spirit that I could overcome these sins. Um, I'm going to give one example. I used to drink like literally every day. Um, I have nothing against alcohol now. Sorry y'all. Um, Corey had to walk the dog because there's a storm's coming. Um, and yeah, lots of distractions. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, so the Lord has like shown me, um, that I believed the gospel. I had faith, um, in Christ. I believed in him. I had faith in him. Um, and then he started to work in my life because Ephesians 1 13 says that when we believe we receive the Holy ghost. Um, and, and when I, began to see the Holy Spirit work in my life. Um, and he convicted me of sins. Um, like I said, one of them was alcohol. Um, ha I feel like this could be like a whole nother video. <laughs> I'm going to go off on a tangent again. Um, but like for instance, like I would drink hard alcohol, like pretty much every day. Um, I don't know, pretty often. Um, and I would even read the Bible. Like when I first got saved, I would read the Bible and I'd be drinking. I would literally be like worshiping God and like drunk. And, um, and I didn't see anything wrong with it. Um, but he began, like all of a sudden I start, what I noticed, you guys, this is how I noticed I had an issue. I, I all of a sudden hated the taste of alcohol, like hated it. It, I like wanted to vomit. Like I couldn't stomach the taste of it. Like I literally like my flesh like repelled it. I don't know how to explain that. Um, something that I just love to taste and like drink all of a sudden didn't taste good. Um, and it was the weirdest experience. <laughs> I can still remember the day that I had a huge gallon of alcohol and I literally poured it down I literally poured it down um, the sink. And this, by this time, y'all, I had been on YouTube. I didn't have a channel at that time, but I had been, Riley, you really, my dog's eating right now. That's just fabulous. So if you hear munching, that's why. Um, anyway, I had literally been on YouTube for like, um, I don't know how long, honestly, but I didn't have like a channel. I was just commenting on channels at that time. And I just remember, <laughs> I remember this one girl um, some of y'all re might remember her, Geo. Um, Jesus lives like 444. Anyway, she, I had commented on her video and I said, um, that I had this like nightmare and I was repenting in a dream. Literally, I was like, God, forgive me of my sin. And it, and it was a really dark dream. And there was this guy and a dog. 
and the dog had one eye out and it was like gory and like the skies were dark and it was like just dark and scary and I told her that and she's like do you need to repent of anything and I was like hmm, have you done something and I'm like thinking well I literally like, last night I literally got drunk um we like we literally got drunk that night and um and then it clicked. I was like, whoa, the, the Lord is like trying to speak to me in dreams about sanctifying and like cutting things out of my life. Um, Cause the scripture says like, it's better to lose one eye than for your whole body to go into hell. You know that scripture that says that. And, and, and he was leading me to that. Like I looked, found it in scripture and I'm like, oh my God, like, I'm like, I'm a bad person. I'm like literally getting wasted. Anyway, so he started convicting me of sin, okay. Um, and, and, and I still remember the day like I had that like huge gallon alcohol bottle and I poured it down the sink. Um, and because it just tasted weird, like I said, it just, it just tasted weird. Um, it didn't taste good. And, it, and then now, now that I know more about the word of God, I'm like talking about like, you know, eating the word of God, tasting what's good, um, spiritually. Um, I just... I know that was the work of him in my life. That was the spirit literally taking away my uh, addiction, my craving towards something that was harmful to me. Um, so long story short, we stopped drinking alcohol, like period, at that time. And, and then he convicted us of gluttony. And I'm going to make a video about that at some point. But it was kind of the same situation. Like things just didn't taste good anymore um but what's weird is um the reason I'm going into this is because this is like that's that second group of people that I'm talking about they believe the gospel they believe in Jesus and then the Lord sanctifies them and then they get they get like arrogant and prideful and judgmental and like you're a sinner why am I so much better than you and um they get arrogant and prideful about it and prideful about like what the Lord is doing in their life and like what the Lord is doing in our lives. Like that's a beautiful thing, but we cannot sit there and compare ourselves to other people. And the Lord taught me that because he let me fall and he showed me, he showed me that like he took things out of my life and, and he did that so that I could realize that I didn't need those things. I just need him. Okay. And so he sanctified me in that way. He showed me, you know, all these things I can have, but I don't need them. Um, they don't necessarily edify my life and my body. So I don't need them. I could drink. I just, I don't, I don't have to drink. Like I don't have like a physical, you know, addiction. I don't have to drink. Um, and so he showed me that because then he showed me that, you know, it's okay to have a glass of wine. Um, it's okay to have a drink. Um, but I do have to be careful because I can get carried away <laughs> with drinking and drink too much. And, and it does happen. And that's, that's the issue with flesh. Like we, we give a little bit and, and then it goes too far. Um, and so it's probably better not to drink. I'm going to be honest. Um, but the Lord showed me that um, there's a time, time and a place for fasting. Um, it's kind of like when Jesus, he showed me this too, when, when we were fasting, like we went like hardcore, like vegan, like not eating meat. We, we were kosher. We're like, we can't eat pork or shellfish. Um, that's a whole nother story. But, um, and we looked down upon people that did, which was really wrong. Um, and now I eat those things. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not going to hide that from somebody and I'm not going to judge somebody if they choose not to eat something or they, if they choose, um, to eat it. Um, same with alcohol. If you choose to drink, that's your choice. If you choose not to, that's your choice too. And that's between you and God. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, some people literally can't drink because they had an extreme addiction and it's just, it'll set them off. Um, and some people, 
like to this day, I still feel guilty because I told somebody when I was going through sanctification and he was taking alcohol out of my life, I literally told somebody, he had asked on Facebook, he was a brother in Christ, he'd asked if it was like okay if he had a glass of wine at dinner because he always has a glass of wine at dinner and he just never saw anything wrong with it. And I literally was like, you need to stop drinking. <sighs> I literally told this guy like what he needed to do. Um, and to this like I... To this day, like, I literally feel guilty for telling that guy that he needed to stop drinking. Um, and I literally have, like, I, I don't know who he is, and I, I can't find him now. Um, that was before I, you know, got rid of my Facebook and then, like, deleted everybody and all that. So, I can't find him. Um, and I've literally prayed to God, like, Lord, please let him know that I'm sorry I ever said that to him. Because I just feel so judgmental. And, um... I didn't offer somebody grace, you know. With that said, we're 12 minutes in and I still haven't covered what I want to cover in this video, you guys. So, here's my thing. There's those people that believe the gospel and then the Lord sanctifies them and, um, and then they think that everybody has to be like them and everybody can't have alcohol because the Lord told them not to drink. Uh, maybe the Lord was trying to teach you a lesson um, maybe that person already learned the lesson and you're judging them. Um, or maybe they haven't learned it and you have no grace. Um, so there's like those people, um, and I feel like a lot of that is like happening on YouTube where people are really truly saved and, and the Lord speaks to them and they have a relationship with Christ and they are being sanctified of sin and that's beautiful and that's a wonderful thing, but they're sitting there. Um, in arrogance and pride judging other channels who are standing on the gospel. Um, and that leads me to the third group, the people that are standing on the gospel and are preaching the gospel, that you're saved by grace through faith. And then those people, you know, are accused of not sanctifying and not cutting sin out. And, and the scriptures Here's the thing, the scriptures do say that there are baby Christians and that there are more mature Christians, okay? So that is possible, that is possible that that's happening. Um, but we don't know that, we don't know someone's walk with the Lord. So, um, and especially on YouTube, like, there's just so much you don't know about us. And like me, you just know like the glimpses that we give you, right? So you don't know like what we're really going through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, unless you're like in communication with other channels or, th or something like that. But um, anyway, so it's just, we just don't know what people are going through, okay? But what I want to get to is that the milk has to be made clear. Salvation has to be made clear um, because without it, people literally don't stand on the gospel. They don't stand on what their salvation is. And then you, then you're looking at people that are literally relying on how good they are. Um, maybe somebody convinces them at a church that they, that they need to get baptized and that's what saves them. And so they literally never believe the gospel. And if you don't believe the gospel, you don't receive his spirit. If you don't receive his spirit, you're in dead works. You're just like, going with the flow of religion. Like you just sit in church and hear a sermon. It might tickle your ears a little bit and then you go home. Um, you're not getting into the word because you just, you don't have the spirit to convict you of that and to guide you through it. Or, you know, some of these Pharisees are getting in the word and they're not interpreting it right because they don't have the spirit to guide them through the interpretation process. So, um, anyways, Okay, y'all, so I want to go ahead and read some scriptures. Hebrews 5, verse 11, and it goes into chapter 6, verse 1. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when, the for, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, so you should be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So you need somebody to teach you the foundation, the principles of your faith, and are becoming such as have need of milk. You need the gospel again. You don't recognize your need of the gospel and not of strong meat, 
meat being the sanctification, the word of God, growing up in your faith. That is what perfection is, um, which I covered. Um, that's Matthew 5, verse 48. Um, it talks about perfection. Be perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. And the meaning of perfection is literally maturing, growing up. So growing up spiritually. Be be grown up so much spiritually that you are like your father. You are walking by spirit. Um, maturity, sanctification. It does not mean be sinless. Okay? So um, for uh, back to Hebrews 5, 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So a baby drinks milk. Um, a gospel. So the gospel of your salvation, that you're saved by grace through faith. That's when you turn into a baby. You're born again. That's why That's why Jesus says that. You're born again. You're now a baby. Um, but he doesn't expect us to stay there. He, he wants us to grow. Um, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So meat eaters can discern good and evil. They can discern sins. Um, they can, they just have more discernment. Um, chapter six, therefore leaving of Hebrew, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. There's the word again, not laying again, the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So here we are again, the Lord is telling them, um, you, you need to move past the foundation of drinking the milk, which is repentance from dead works, turning from the law and of faith toward God. That's what that says. So that's, that's how we're saved. We're, we repent, we turn from the law and we turn to Christ. We turn from self and we turn to Christ, um, uh, because we can't, we can't, um, obtain salvation without him. And so this is the basic principle of the Christian faith. And Paul is telling them, let us move on to perfection, which, which in the Greek means maturity, growth. Um, let's go on and eat meat. So the meat represents maturing and growth in Christ and your faith. Um, so I wanted to share that. And then... Um, Perfection does not mean not sinless. It means growth, growing spiritually, um, which I covered in like my first video. Okay, so conduct in the church. I just want to read this. James 4.11, speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and all and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, here we go again, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Um so here we go again in 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3. There's another reference to babes in Christ drinking the milk. Um, and every time babes in Christ are mentioned, it's also there's also like fleshy behaviors mentioned, like malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies, evil speakings. Um, and then up here in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, it says... Um, that they are, let me find it, um, they're jealous and there's strife among them. And I'll read that here too. But if you notice, when everywhere in scripture, when it talks about babies, they, um, they're fleshy. Okay? So 1 Corinthians 3, 1. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, meat. For you are not ready for it, and even now you, you are not ready, yet ready. For you are still of the flesh. He's calling them out. They're still fleshy. 
um, they're not walking by spirit. That doesn't mean they're not saved. Okay, we need we need to understand that. Um, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere, being merely human? Um, is that not going on on YouTube? Oh, you follow this person. Oh, you follow that one. Okay, I understand when, when it's, if somebody's not standing on the gospel, that's an issue. Um, and that needs to be addressed. But um, anyway, verse 5. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through who, whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered. So they had two different jobs. Two important jobs, but they were different. But God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Um, so we'll receive rewards based on what we've done. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Um, and so one thing I just want to say about that is, like he said, I planted, Apollos watered. Um, yeah, we, on YouTube, we have different, different abilities. Um, and when I say that, like strong points is what I'm trying to say. Um, like some people are really strong at preaching the gospel and that's fine. That's a beautiful thing. That's, that's the milk of the word. We all need to understand the milk and we all need to stand on that. And then there's some that want to discuss other things, um, like sanctification or casting sins out and that's okay too um we shouldn't be um you know judging what another channel does in that sense as long as we're all um on the same page that we're saved by grace through faith that has to be um addressed um because that's the foundation like I, i've read in these scriptures that's the foundation of christianity of our belief system. So if we don't believe the same thing, then we're not brothers and sisters. Um, but if we're brothers and sisters, it's okay that one waters and one plants. Um, it's okay to be different. I just wanted to put that out there because from the scriptures, we're told that babes drink milk and then more mature Christians eat meat. And what the Lord has been speaking to me is that we have to stand on the foundation, the principle of our belief system, which is turning from law, like the word says, to grace, um, to our faith in Christ and what he did and that we couldn't live up to his standard. Um, and that has to be our foundation because what happens is if we don't stand on that and we aren't clear about that, we literally breed Pharisees. We literally teach people to earn salvation. And I'm seeing that in churches um, and I mean, most churches have fallen away from the gospel. Um, and they're adding everything to it. Like you have to get baptized, you have to speak in tongues or, or you, or you can't speak in tongues. Like the gifts are completely out the door. Um, just everything is unbiblical. Um, but if we stand on the gospel that you're saved by grace through faith, everything in the word of God can be interpreted, interpreted and worked out among the body. Um, but the foundation, like if you, if you don't got that, like you might as well throw it all out. You don't have anything. If you don't have your salvation, you don't have anything. So we have to stand firm on the gospel. Um, so I just wanted to make a video about that. Um, it's great to talk about the meat of the word, but make sure that people know they're not saved by the sanctification process. They just need to understand that. Um, and that we're saved by, by grace. Um, not that chewing on the word and like growing in your faith is a bad thing. If it is, if you want to do that, um, not if it is, if you want to do that, that's a beautiful thing. But you have to recognize that there's going to be babies in Christ too. And you have to give grace to the baby Christian. That doesn't mean they're not saved. It means that they need to get convicted by reading the word of God and listening to the Holy Spirit in their life. Um, anyway. I hope this was edifying and that this helped you guys tonight. I love you guys. Have a good night.